Yo. Hey. Can you hear me? You listening? Hashtag. W A W. What a week. What a week. Week. Hello, Wowzers. Welcome to Wow What a Week, part of the Africa Podcast Network. You can email us at waw at pod- africapodcastnetwork.com. Find us on YouTube, Spotify, and all other reputable podcast hosts. Shout out to the Wowzers that came through for the Brenda Mdambo concert. And shout out to Brenda. She gave an incredible concert. And uh, we were big fans. Now we're even bigger fans. It was also dope meeting the Wowzers that came out. Now, there was a silly statement around 1993 where people would say, if that party wins the election, there'll only be three months in the year. January, February, March, 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 March. And this month has felt like a bunch of months. So congratulations on making it to the end of March. And thanks for joining us once again. This is... Wow! What a week. What a week. You can't make this shit up. Now, some people try to create a brand by name dropping. Then you have people like our guest today, who cuts his own path. Then just someone mentions his dad once in a while because he happens to be a South African legend. The big question is, are you ready for this legend in the making? Creating a legendary path of his own, though, is Primo Aloy, a.k.a. Primo 19. Make some noise for Primo 19. Beep, 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 beep. I need horns when I enter. I need beep, 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 beep. And there we go. <laughs> Now, you, 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 you put out a tweet uh, the other day. In fact, um, I need to find your tweet uh, quickly. From the 15th of March, walking away from a meeting and feeling understood is such a dope feeling. Yeah. Tell us about that. It never really happens, though. That's why. Like, you come from a meeting, either you're in trouble, someone's in trouble. Yes. We're fixing something. Sure. Or I'm bringing up a concern. Oh, yes. You know what I mean? Now, this was the first time I walked out and I was like, hmm, these people understood me. We're moving forward now. What if it's a hidden camera show? It doesn't feel oh, like it's that. It I was worked. getting punked. Yeah. I might have been getting punked. I could have believed it. But nah, 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 nah. Those people held it out. Primo 19, for those that know nothing about you. Yeah. In 30 seconds, how would you sell yourself an elevator pitch? How would you sell yourself in an elevator? 30 seconds. Primo 19, once you see me, you see everyone behind me. You know, if, if you know that there's a legend, if you don't know that there's a legend behind me, you'll see me when you meet me. Okay. When you realize that I'm an actor, I'm a modella, I'm an entertainer, I'm a comedian, I'm everything you want me to be. That's Primo 19, everything. But you also went to varsity where you didn't finish, though. Why are you exposing me like this? Was, 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 was that part of the act? <laughs> <laughs> everything is part of the journey. Come on, big dog. What did you do in varsity? So I actually started by studying economics, yeah. an economics degree. I didn't finish. Sure. Uh, hey, it was tough. I got to managerial economics. Now they're mixing. It's not even algebra anymore. Yes. It's like a sentence and some numbers, and we must figure out what the economy is moving according to this thing. Sure. I said, no, you know what? Yeah. Manzo. Yeah. So when I, <laughs> when I say God now, because this one, we're not going anywhere. Um, and then I went on to try managerial um, strategic management. Sure. It was a bit boring. It was not challenging. And then I did brand and marketing management. But you also did soccer. Yeah. Tell us about your soccer journey. Eish, my soccer career was really hectic. And it's like, maybe can I live bad? I feel like I'm bad luck. Okay. Because I played for... So I played amateur football my whole life and whatever. Mm. Then I got the chance to play for Mpumalanga Black Aces. Okay. Just before they sold it. Uh, and it became Cape Town City, uh-huh. as it is right now. So it's like, when I left, the club got sold sharp. Then I went to Bitbiz Fitz. Yeah. And then I played at Bitbiz. It's, that's the longest spell that I've had in my career. I think it was about five years I spent at Bitbiz. Mm. As soon as I leave, next season, they sell Bitbiz. It's, and now it's um, it's most cocoon. It's one of the clubs now. It was cocoon. Yeah, one of these other so, ones. Are you saying you were the problem for these teams all along? I might be. I thought I was <laughs> maybe bringing that. I might be. It might be me, actually. So I, I'm not sure, man. I just stopped after that. Were you playing soccer because your pops played soccer, or do you think it's in the blood? Damn, you're getting deep. No, no, but, no but for real, though, because some kids think because my dad is funny, I'm also funny. Both, yeah. actually. So I started it off because of that. I was like, ah, oh, this is my timer. This is show also. Yeah. Who, who is your timer? Ish. Ish. If people don't know, if they, if they want to cover actually what I'm wearing today, 
He was actually captain of Leeds United. He was captain of Bafana, formerly uh, the only holder yeah, of Alcon. But, but Leeds have had many captains. Which one? Uh, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the most successful Leeds captain. Maybe he, was the, uh, uh, <laughs> he was actually the number one. Also. He was captain when Leeds was on top. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, he's the great... Uh, Lucas Khatebe, a.k.a. The Chief, a.k.a. A.k.a. Le Daima. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so you're explaining about uh, kids who do something because daddy was doing it or mommy was doing it. So I, I realized that's a big, like, mental issue sure. that I kind of had, you know. Um, um, me and my dad didn't have the best relationship growing up, you know, obviously because he was always traveling, he was sure. abroad, and nana elim fano go haman and then... Did you ever wonder why I'm stuck in Haman's Kral and he's traveling? It was the weirdest thing for me because I never understood it because everybody made hype around who my dad is, but it's like, ah, dude. But I'm not going to tell him. Oh, I'm not going to tell him. 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 So, um, I think because of how that started, I was like, sure. I need to prove mm. actually who I am to this guy. And the only way to prove it is by doing what he did. Was there any stage where you felt maybe some sort of resentment or that, like I said, I'm here, Temba, yeah. Hamans Kral, sure. Litaima is this global icon. Like, how is that even fair? Yeah, I mean, and the thing is, so there were other kids after that, you know, he, he had a whole... Yeah, he went and started... A... Yeah, my siblings were that side, and yeah. all that. So I was like, ah, I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to you know, and um, I think that kind of is what started my journey into football. Sure. But after a while, I let that go and sure. didn't really become about the resentment. I love the sport. I yes. just yes, sir. And I'm hooked. Sure. So then I realized I've actually got it, you know, yeah. and I started using my height. I'm taller than him. Yes, yes. Um, and I was a center back also. So I was like, all right, let me show you. I got this. I, sh I just made a mistake when I hit his cut. That is my problem. Mm. I said, I a cheese cup on the side. I said, Red Sure. Hey, sh Gandhi doesn't work for everyone. Hey, yeah, yeah. That's not a real cut. If one of the stories for you can't make this ish up for this week, Bafana Bafana going to AFCON. Yeah. Yeah. Surprising. And we're not hosting. Finally. <laughs> Someday. <laughs> it was a problem. My thing is, we celebrated like we won. Yeah. That's my thing. Like, this that, this is what we're celebrating <laughs> now. We can't celebrate a trophy anymore. Sure. We need to celebrate going to compete. We made it. We made it to the wall. It's an honor to be nominated. Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but shout out to the boys. Shout out to the boys. Yes. A lot of them are actually guys I played with formerly. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, yeah, Zakele Lepasa, he put on a great performance as a striker. Mm. I played against him. He scored a crazy goal against me when I was still playing like a man. So, so, so that could have been you, but you kept leaving teams. That's all I feel. Yeah. Like, when I'm watching these guys progressing into the PS, and I'm like, yo, guys, it's not, I'm here acting a full more TikTok. It's fine. It's fine. In fact, let's talk TikTok. Yeah. When is someone on TikTok versus being a TikToker? Hmm. Like, what's that fine line? Because you right now have reached the league of he's a TikToker. Sure. But there's also millions of us who are just on TikTok. What's the difference? I think the biggest difference is when you stop doing it for yourself. Okay. When you start now developing people who are watching and saying, oh, we want this now. Oh, so when yes. you're on TikTok, people want to tell you what to do. That's yes. the weird thing about TikTok. Sure. You start, you thought, you thought you were funny here. Sure. They're like, no, add this thing. Mm. So once people start telling you to add this and to do that and we want more and pretty much where you at, uh, that's when you know you're inside the game. Okay. You're fully in. But but how do you balance the, this is what my audience expect of me Yo. and my creativity says I need to go here. Yeah. It's been the top. That's actually one of my biggest challenges. Sure. Like, because now it's people are expecting me to just live on TikTok. Yes. And it's like, okay, now that I live here, I must produce every day like I've always done for the past two years. Yes. And I must keep creating content. So now I think I lead with my idea. Mm. I lead with what inspired this idea, and then I then add what I feel like that people would enjoy on yes. on top of. In it. fact, you rose to prominence during lockdown. Yeah with your quarter skit. Yeah. For those that don't know, a quarter is taking a quarter of a loaf of bread, removing the inside and filling it with whatever filling you want. It could be um, 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 a potato chip. Russian is uh, special. Uh, uh, Russian is a sausage, guys, not a person from Russia. Lali beef loaf, bafaga bafaga acha, bafaga cheese, bafaga paloni. So tell us about that skit. Uh, what was it about that skit that you think 
had people say, we like this Primo 19 kid. So I think I was one of the first people to twist an Amer- This song was trending in America. So yes. it was that old song. Yeah, you probably know that. Don't, don't that, look that, any further. That's that's Dennis that, Edwards. That, yes. that, that, that's your type. Yes. So um, that song starts with a, oh. Yes. And it was trending. <laughs> exactly. So it was trending in America because of this. And people were making funny things about it. So I was like, ah, man. TikTok, and at that time, TikTok wasn't so South African. Either. Yes, yes. Even the South African TikTokers were doing American stuff. Sure, sure. That's when I decided I actually want to bring it home. South African all the way. Yes. And then I took I took a quota and I made that sound my reaction yes. to eating the quota. Americans are now jumping on asking me, is that mac and cheese? Yeah. What is in that? Now they're trying to guess the ingredients of a quota. I was like, guys, I'm flying the national flag so high. Sure. Americans want to ch- try a quota. Yes, yes, no, yes. guys, no, I need my flowers. But yeah, after that, after that, it's been moving. Now I just flip everything. In fact, there's a quota festival happening, I think, this coming weekend. Oh, so wait. Uh, yes. I might be there. I, 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 is it in Soweto? I think it's, it is in Soweto. Yeah, last time I checked it was. What do you not put in a quota? Like, what, what is like, it's sacrilegious to have put that in a quota? And you know, a lot of people have been doing this. Yes. I'm annoyed. Yes. Letis. Why would you put lettuce in a quota? I don't know why they're doing this thing. So they first started uh, this thing, uh, the triple deck. How about that? Sure. We must have everything. We must have a piece of beef and a piece of chicken. Why? Why are we gluttonous and eating so much meat? First of all, I'm mad. Yes, yes. Number two, how am I going to bite this thing? Because part of a quota is that you eat everything at once. It must be like it must be like an orgy of tastes on your taste part. Explode, it you all, know. It must all explode. Exactly. And now I must now eat this first and eat that first and come here and cut this thing. No. Gota is meant to fit in my mouth. Yes. So you can go hard, but don't go overboard. I... Mara lettuce. Sure. Uh, it's only top guy. I'm, I'm annoyed. Let's stop with the lettuce, please. I understand you want some crunch. Arfag in December. Gota's from the hood. Arfag in December. Another story this week that's been trending for the last two, two and a half, three weeks yeah. is um, the Besta story. Yo. That thing is really crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, I even had this chat with my Uber driver now that how does... This guy, this crime and everything that he's doing right now, this is like popular Escobar level, like this yes. is highest level criminal. Like, yeah. And can I tell you the funny thing? Tell us. <laughs> I'm actually scared to say this. I made it. You're lying. I met him. When? I met him a month ago. You're lying. They, guys, I, you know what's the thing? I think he's trying to do what he did again. So I was part of, I'm, big dog, you're looking at me like you don't believe me. I met this guy. I had a meeting with him, and let me tell you how I knew. Yes. Only when those pictures came out, they're like, ah, this is the guy, this is Ed Woolwet. I'm like, no man. I met this guy, man. I was chilling with this guy, now, now. So I started calling the people that arranged the meeting, yes. and I'm like, guys, what's going on? They're like, dude, we're we didn't so know. sorry, we didn't know yeah. we're putting you in danger. I actually chilled with this guy, we had a whole like 30 minute meeting. This guy's wearing LV, he's dripped out, he's got like a Jacob and co watch, he's got two security guards. I was like, all right, cool. What, what did you guys talk about? What did he need from you? He didn't need anything. So, I, you, and, and I'm suspecting that he's trying to do what he was doing that time with the Facebook, but now it's obvious Instagram, we've moved up. Yes, yes. So they're like, no, we need influencers for this new campaign, for this new brand, whatever, whatever, whatever. And obviously me, brand and marketing management, ah, brought out the English. I said, <laughs> no, I'm twanging. They're like, no, I said, so much money on the line. Let's get it. Ah. Then they, ah, oh, leave the meeting room. He's even happy with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I even asked a female friend of mine yeah. who was actually also in the meeting before. Sure. And I'm like, dude, how was the meeting? She's like, no, it was, bra- it was brilliant. I think this is, you know, really good opportunity. I'm like, right, cool. The day I saw that it's this guy, I'm like, no ways, guys. There's no, I had to call the girl. I'm like, dude, have you spoken to them? She's like, yeah, I'm supposed to have a meeting. I'm like, don't go. Please don't go to this meeting. You are going to be a statistic. Yeah. Let's chill out. I sent her everything. She's like, no ways. She couldn't sleep. Like, we went on this, like, three-hour chat on how we almost got kidnapped. I almost got kidnapped. Big dog, you would have been saying, uh, uh, R.I.P. Primo. But you Before you met me, big you, dog. You can't make this ish up. Big dog. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm, I was scared, but I was like, damn, I survived. Why would you have wanted with me? What was you going to do? I was going to fight me. Yeah. I'm going to big dog. I'm going to i to Speaking of fighting, uh, another story in the news this week, Lesotho won some of their land back. Yeah. That's, an, that's intense. Yeah. Why? What do you mean? Did we take it from them in the first place? 
Well, a lot has happened with the, with the, with borders over the last three four hundred years. Yeah, man, that's uh, getting tabata kahle. Now we can't even do the papers. Now people, what? Let's sort out waterfall first. Let's sort out waterfall. You know, I, I'm actually got a friend. What, what, what's happening in waterfall? I get waterfall. They say it's got owners, and now you can't buy land on waterfall because yeah. uh, ninety nine year lease. Let's sort out waterfall, please. Yeah. I also want to plot the humanity. Waterfall is fine. Let's make it so that I can buy something yes. at waterfall. Then we can talk about Lesotho. You know the funny thing? I've got a friend on Twitter. Uh-huh. He tweeted the funniest thing. He's like, the Zulus and Lesotho, mm. they, all, they both want more land. True. Whoever can say R first can handle it. <laughs> Let's start by saying Rolls Royce. <laughs> Let's, start. Let's start by, if I was about to, who laws laws? Why is they can fire that R now? <laughs> Or we call it Rolls Royce. Whoever gets closest to that R. Oh, wrong, son. You can end up. We long, we long. Whoever can take the land. How do you decide your content on your Primo 19 account? Like, how do you decide, okay, this I can flip, yeah. or this I'm going to do from scratch? Hmm. So, there's there's two methods. Sure. Either I'm flipping or I'm reenacting. Yes. If I'm flipping, the sound, first of all, needs to be dope. It needs sure. to be catchy and yeah. it needs to make me laugh. Mm. My sense of humor is broken. Okay. Big dog, I can't laugh. Sure. I barely laugh. You see this laughing I'm doing here? Mm. It's fake. It's because I'm next to my attention. Yeah, but no. I, my sense of humor is so broken that yeah. it, that sound must get me close to laughing for me to know that you guys are going to laugh. Okay. Number one. Mm. Number two, there needs to be at least something, if not trending, like... Sure. You know, over the over the course of that, there must be a way case, something. Okay. If not, I'm going for a memory. Oh yeah, I'm reaching back into okay. into time and like trying to give something that you guys really relate to. Mm. And then uh, if I'm reenacting, the sound is just funny. Yes, and my characters can do my was with whatever's going on. Which skit did you do um, on TikTok and across your social media that had responses you never even expected? Where you're like, oh, flip. Okay, they really did like it. So I did this one. Remember Umlando? Yes. When all the nig- all the bruises were hips. Uh, yeah. All whining. Guy, 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 guy is twerking. Yes. I uh, don't. Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we were five to Magic Mike in Umzans, Magic Mkwanas, yes. we were so close. Um, uh, unfortunately, the girls do the Umlando better than the guys. Though. They do, but we don't want to see. And, and and I'm glad they actually took over. Because I was like, I was like, Big Dog, we what? need something. Why am I watching Primo 19's waist like that? I don't ever want to see it. Big Dog, we need to do something also. Give us a chance. We need to show or we instrumental. Our hips don't lie. But you can also deliver. You can also deliver. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there was actually, when all of that was trending, sure. I made a video the first time and then me and those got together and spoke. Then there was another video that I made with Umlando again. Mm. But it was an African. So this sure. guy translated it. Vandaga maak ons geschiedenis. Dit is a groot dag vir geschiedenis. <laughs> so I made an idea about sure. And I'm like, ish, they won't feel it. So I put in my drafts for two weeks. Yeah. But Umlando was still trending. Sure. And that one day I was like, damn, I'm too busy. Mm. I can't make a video from scratch. Let me just throw this one from the drafts. Threw it inside. Next day it had 1.5 million views in 15 hours. Shut up. That was, it moved the most. Oh, wow. I've never had a video move as quick as that one. Oh, wow. And now I think it's on like 5 million views. Is there money on TikTok? Ish, now there is. They're yeah. trying. But, but it's like Have you made any money off TikTok? I've made, I don't want to say off TikTok. Because yeah. It's not from the platform itself. Okay. So my money comes from brands. I'm a marketer. Oh, yes, yes. I'm yes. using my brand and marketing mm, mm. background. Who, who are some of your clients? Sure. I've had almost everybody. Yeah. I've had, um, let me think about it, McDonald's, KFC. Let's start with the food. McDonald's, KFC, Burger King. Sure. Uh, then we move on to electronics. I've done Samsung. I've done, I think I've done Samsung. I've done, Op- not Oppo. There's another phone sing the brand. I forgot them. Sorry, guys. One of the other Androids. So you, well, you guys. Yes. Um, and then I've done, yo, I can't even. I'm busy with Escort right now. Is, is, done, is it sustainable? Like, could you make this your living? Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I, that's what it is. Dear parents, we're sorry. <laughs> new line of work. <laughs> new teacher, new varsity, new course. <laughs> Where do we find you on social media, my dude? If you don't already know who I am, please find me at Primo19, P-R-I-M-O, the number nine, T-E-E-N, yes, everywhere, sir. every social media network. What's happening next in your career, in your life? You see, this year, big dog, mm. I'm going for the screens. Yes. I'm tired of this. This, this screen here is too small. Yes, yes. I yes. need bigger screens. I need a big screen. I need 52 inch. So you're going to see me on Netflix. You're going to see me. So you're working. You're working. This movement. I can never stop. 
we can never stop working. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Primo19. Google him. Let's support him. Let's get all his videos to a million views if they're not already at a million views. Beep, 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 beep. Primo19 has left the building. This is... Wow! What, what, what a week. What a week. Tick. 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 Hello, wowzers. We are talking tech. So Y2K came and left while we survived what the minds had predicted that the world would end. Our minds floated into thoughts that we'd been flying cars by now. In fact, 20 years prior on Beyond 2000 on TV3. Yes, I've been watching TV for that long. Much was predicted, including semi and fully autonomous cars. And 40 years on, we're not flying, but plugging them into sockets. Like I saw at Hyde Park Shopping Center the other day. So we thought we'd get someone with over 20 years experience in, no, not electricity, but motoring. To both help us gain insight and plug us in on the latest in car matters, please welcome motoring editor, Tami Masemola. <laughs> Hello, Tam. How's it, DJ Fresh? How are you doing? I'm all good, I'm all good. Uh, you are here because we love tech, but we also love guys who love cars, and you're one such guy. Yes, I love tech, I love cars. So, Electric Car 101, just so that we get this out of the way, what is the difference between what we're all driving right now and so-called electric cars, or hybrids, if you will? So, an electric car, uh, let's say, compared to a petrol and diesel car, yeah. Petrol in a diesel car has an engine which sits in the front or the back or the middle. Sure. You put petrol in there or you put diesel in there, you start it up and it starts moving. So it's got an engine. Yes. An electric car has electric motors, it has a battery pack. Ah. So electric motors sit uh, on the wheels, mm -hmm. the battery pack sits underneath the car. Sure. And those are the things that get the car moving. And you don't put petrol or diesel into it. You charge it up like your cell phone. Sure. And that's how it starts moving. And if it's a hybrid, what is that? So a hybrid has a combination of both. It okay. has a petrol engine and a battery pack. to So it alternates between the two power sources. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, often people joke about, um, but South Africa could never have like fully electric cars because we have a power problem. Jokes aside, how ready are we? for an electric car market? First of all, it's not a joke. Yeah. It's really true. We, <laughs> don't like us, okay? we don't have the power. And like I said, you need to charge the thing. Sure. You know, it works like your cell phone. Mm. When the power's off, where do you charge your cell phone? You know, your options are very limited. Sure. So as South Africa, obviously, you know, we have a load shedding problem mm. and uh, electric cars need to be charged in order for them to move. So all things being equal, and ESCOM was not an issue. How far are we from, like the EU expect uh, EU countries to be fully electric card? Is it by 2035, I think? Yes. They announced that this week. Yes. Uh, although obviously the German, the Germans doth protested and said, listen, we've got e-fuels. Surely our e-fuel cars should be allowed also to be on the roads. So all things being equal, how far are we from such a state? We are very far. Yeah. We are very what's, far. What's the problem? So. Part of the problem, obviously, is infrastructure development. If you drive around any corner in South Africa, you might find yourself a petrol station, sure. petrol diesel station, which we call garages in this country. Mm. Four court. Yeah. Thousands of them mm. all around the country. Mm. So you can never literally run out of fuel because you can fill up at any of those stations or sure. any of those points. Mm. Electric cars need a charger, and we just don't have enough of them scattered around the country. Mm. Yes, we have a lot of them now. Uh, we have over a hundred, but they're mainly in metropolitan centers, sure. shopping centers, mm. selected metropolitan centers and shopping centers. Mm. There's one in Oartambo, for instance, sure. and along some of the major freeways, like the N1, N3, N2, etc. Mm. But they are not as widely available as sure. petrol stations. And therefore, in terms of the infrastructure build, mm. we are still far behind. In fact, I was at uh, the Hyde Park Shopping Center the other day, and one of the parking lots is like, charge your car here. How long do I need to charge this car? So it depends. Uh, there's cars that you can charge from, it won't be zero, because at zero, the car is not moving. Yes. And you need a flatbed. Let's say from about 10%. So about from about 10%, uh, 
uh, to about 80%. There's cars now that you can charge in about 20 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. And 80% will give you roughly about 250 to 300 kilometers of range. Mm. So that's nice. But if you really want to fill it up to 100%, it can take up to two hours. Jeez. Depending one on the type of charger, mm. the amount of power that the charger can emit, sure. as well as the type of battery that the car um, has. So mm. an hour and a half, two hours. So I've bought the car. How do I charge it at home? Does it come with a special thing? To charge it. So there's three types of chargers. Yeah. Uh, the one that we just spoken about is mm. the public charger, which you'll find at your shopping center, mm. at you know, on the freeway, etc. The second one is a wall socket, sure. which they literally put on the wall at your house somewhere. Mm. Normally the garage where you park the car. Sure. Uh, you plug that in, so there's a little bit of a socket thing on the side of the car. Uh, it could be on the front, could be at the back, mm. anywhere. You plug it in, switch it on, and it charges, you know, far long that you are need to charge. Oh, so I could leave it overnight, for instance? You could leave it overnight. Okay. Uh, in fact, that is recommended that every time you park the car, you charge it. Third one mm. is a portable one. It sits in the boot of the car. Oh, wow. Okay. And you can plug it into any socket in South Africa and charge it. Oh, to fill it up just a little bit. Unfortunately, that is the slowest charger oh. of all of them. Yes, yes, yes. It will take a very, very long time. It takes up to about 11 hours to fill up. But once it's full and it's in your boot, though, at least you know you've got battery power Yes, yes. You know, behind you. I've heard of a story of a guy who drove a BMW i3, for instance, from Joburg to Cape Town. Yeah. And at some point he was running out of power and he was panicking. And he had to stop somewhere and ask somebody to plug into their house oh, wow. and charge his car. <laughs> so, you know, it can get a little bit exciting. Okay, so I could drive to Durban comfortably, but not to Cape Town. So that depends again yeah. on the car that you are driving. Okay. The cars right now uh, have ranges that range mm, mm. up to a certain point. So, so, so let's say we're between 200 and what? So at the moment, you have about 200 to about 600 kilometers. Geez, range. So which car can give you 600 uh, Ks? At the moment, the at the moment, uh, the BMW iX okay. uh, 50 will give you uh, 600 kilometers of range. Okay. So you could conceivably drive from Joburg to, uh, to, 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 to Durban. In fact, I've seen a guy do it. Um, at what speed are we going? Ah, 110, you know, national speed limit. Okay. <laughs> so if, let's say, there's a wind behind you, and it's downhill <laughs> most of the way, when you're doing, say, 140, 160, well, does that affect your battery? The faster you're going? Yes, yes. So uh, uh, electric vehicles do work like uh, petrol and diesel powered cars in that way. Okay. That the faster you go, the quicker the battery gets depleted. But how is it that there isn't a device in the car that as the wheels are turning, it's creating energy that is taken back to the battery? Ah, there actually is. Okay. Unfortunately. So I should actually be a scientist then. <laughs> Unfortunately, that device isn't as it isn't powerful enough to give you so much uh, charging. Okay. But it's called uh, brake regeneration, okay. so it does give back a little bit of energy into the car. Not a lot, but okay. you know it keeps you going. It'll give you maybe five or ten extra kilometers. Currently in South Africa, who are the leaders in terms of if you're going to get an electric car, get this car? Whether it's in terms of pricing or efficiency or battery life or quality of car. Well, I, I, I can't really tell you about leaders per yeah. se, but I can tell you that, for instance, Jaguar Land Rover uh, has a, an electric vehicle called the I-Pace. Yes. It has a range of over 450 kilometers, which is very nice. I-Pace is the size of what car? What I-Pace name? would be, it's an SUV, mid-sized SUV. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, very spacious, actually. Mm -hmm. um, then, obviously, you've got the BMWs, uh, the iXs, iX3. Uh, even the new 7 Series is a, a, an electric vehicle uh, uh, option, which mm -hmm. is called the i7. Sure. And you can get one of those big cars. Mercedes-Benz has EQs, also uh, depending on what what, mm. what model you want. Audi also has uh, electric vehicles. Sure. So those are the main ones currently selling electric vehicles, unfortunately. How much am I spending on an electric vehicle in South Africa? <laughs> like, what do I budget? Let's say so, entry level, entry level. So entry level at the moment would be a mini. And that mini, you will pay just under 800,000 rand. 
for that. Fully electric. Fully electric. 800,000. Yeah. And it gives you a range of around 250 odd kilometers. So what am I paying for? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you're getting... Incidentally, getting, incidentally, in- incidentally um, after this man, we're chatting to Mini Lamini. Speaking of minis. Yes, sir. So 800 yeah. is entry level. At the moment, yes. Seven series, what am I paying for that? Okay, so at that level, uh, you're paying about three and a half to four million rand, including a car like the Porsche Taycan, for instance, which also, you know, goes over for the four million rand mark. Let's talk about our favorite Praetorian, our favorite boy from Pretoria, uh, Elon Musk. Is he deliberately making sure we don't get the Tesla in this country? Because we're hearing stories about Tesla going to be doing this in Zim or that here. Tesla at some stage had said they'd be in the country before 2020. What on earth is going on? Personally, I don't know what is going on with Mr. Musk. Yeah. But yes, he had promised us a Model 3 around 2019. Mm. We're still waiting. I don't know what year it is now, but it's not here yet. Mm. Mm. Uh, There are a couple of people that have imported from several countries. Also, you could import a Tesla. You could as, as a grey import. Okay. It's not necessarily allowed. So where would you get your after sales? Exactly. <laughs> so do you go to an electrician or do you go to a an IT guy or do you go to a mechanic? Maybe you have to tweet Elon Musk himself. <laughs> this is the main problem. There is no support for you. Okay, so but there are guys who are bringing in grey Teslas already. Yes, uh, but obviously it's not recommended. Yeah. But um, the Tesla, for instance, is not just an electric car. It also has um, semi and full autonomy options, surely, right? Yes, which are not exactly tested yet. In in fact, I was going to say, I mean, there was a massive recall in the U.S. Was it over, what, 300,000 cars uh, because the the, the autonomy issue that they had? What what is an autonomous car, for those that wouldn't know? So as... Everything else in Mr. Musk's world, yes, there is a bit of hype, yeah, exaggeration and overselling. Okay, and he has sold this idea that he has now created an autonomous car. An autonomous car is a car that drives itself. It basically you sit there somewhere in in the car somewhere, mm-hmm. back mm-hmm. front, whatever, sure. and it just drives everywhere. We're not there yet. We actually are not there yet. Uh, obviously, there are other car manufacturers that are developing similar systems. Mm, mm. Um, for, for instance, I mean, I was in um, I was in a Kia um, the other day. Um, 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 was it the Carnival? And it has like almost semi-autonomy, where it will kind of help you along, but you just must keep your hands on the steering wheel to some extent. But when the road curves, it will curve for you. So those are fine. That is exactly where we are right now. Yes. And at some point it might break a little bit, but it, it lasts only about six seconds. Yes. You know. Yes. Fully autonomous, we're not there yet. And to sell a an idea like that to customers is actually quite dangerous. And this is what uh, Mr. Musk has been doing for, for a while. But for instance, in a place like San Francisco, you can call a cab that's fully autonomous. That that uses um, AI and every other... Um, 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 every other technology to get you where you need to get to. So for me, yeah. you know, autonomous cars are more or less like flying cars. Okay. It's doable, but is it desirable? Yes, yes, so, yes. Uh, If we're having so many collisions and accident on the road, yeah. can you imagine a bus dropping from the sky after an accident into this building? For instance. So, you know. Surely it would come with parachutes, though. Well, we don't know. What if there's a hole in the parachute? <laughs> We've got holes in the road and we're fine. Well, we are fine because we're on the road. <laughs> but I mean, a big bus full of people getting into this building from the sky. Yeah. It's a little undesirable. Mm-hmm. So I think it's something we have to be really careful about. Now, when it comes to tech, which cars are leading currently? Generally, the Germans, yeah. uh, you know, depending on what tech you're talking about, mm. you know, whether it's large touch screens, whether it's, you know, obviously the level of semi-autonomousness of the car, sure. the electrification of the vehicle, etc. cetera, mm. uh, the Germans are generally ahead. Um, so so what, what, what a typical German car that has all the bells and whistles come with? Jeez. That's teched out. It's, it's, it's more or less, well, if you look at the new 7 Series, for instance, um, with the big cinema cinema screen at screen screen at the back yeah. it's about I think it's like 32 inches or something mm. so it's basically the width of the vehicle entirely 
Um, well, yeah, yeah, sitting at the back there, adjustable rear seats. Uh, you know, a detective uh, it detects uh, cows on the road mm. when mm. it's dark. It sure. sees it sees in the dark, and mm. some of the cars even detect potholes sure. um, up to about. Five uh, five hundred meters away, so you know. Five hundred meters away. Yeah, so it'll detect. I thought Wayne's does that for you. When? <laughs> <laughs> no ways. <laughs> the South Koreans, though, have quite, come quite a way in terms of making. I mean, I remember about nineteen ninety eight when I was on the radio. I was reading um, Cars of the Year, and Kia was right at the bottom with the Sportage. This was about 98. In terms of cars you want to get and cars you don't want to get. Kia have come quite a way, though. In fact, South Korea generally have come quite a way in terms oh, yeah. of cars and take in cars. Absolutely. I mean, South Korea in general has come a long way. I mean, yeah. look at Samsung. Exactly. Uh, but in terms of cars, you look at companies like Hyundai and Kia. Mm. Uh, in fact, Kia is a finalist with two cars at Car of the Year this year, sure. which is you know shows you exactly how far they've come. Mm. And they've got a really really nice looking and capable electric vehicles. Mm. You, you know, like the K9 and the the EV sure. You know, it's so you know the Koreans are now where let's say the Germans were ten years ago. Sure, they've caught up. The Chinese and they're competing. They are competing. Yeah. The and the Chinese? Chinese. The, it's taking the Chinese much shorter periods of time sure. to get to where, let's say, the Koreans were 15 years ago. For, for instance, I had a rental the other day and uh, they gave me a haval. And the bells and the whistles in there are not bad at all. Yeah. So they do sell that yeah. fully loaded thing. Yeah. Um, although some even, the, even the buckies are coming fully loaded. Yeah. 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 I mean, you know, South Africans with sunroofs, yes. that thing comes standard. Sure. Uh, if you want to buck you with a sunroof, there you go. A buck is already a convertible, <laughs> so, you know. Exactly. <laughs> you exactly. need a sunroof. Yeah. But they do come with all the bells and whistles, and sure. the tech is current. Mm. So, and obviously now they're also getting into the electric vehicle game. Sure. And we're going to see some Chinese electric vehicles. And I, for one, am excited about that because of the affordability factor. Oh, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Before we let you go, predictions for car of the year. 2023. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to do that because the evaluation days are actually next week, Monday. So and, you and, have and to. You, give, and you're on the panel, right? Yes, I am on the panel. So you have to give each car a fair chance. Ah, see. yes. Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't want to get myself into that little bit of a mess. Could we commit you to writing it down and we will reveal it when they reveal it? No, you could not. <laughs> How? This guy. <laughs> You know what? This year the cars are so good. Yeah. So it's really. <laughs> Who are the finalists? Who are the finalists? It's 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 a number of them. Yeah. Uh, Alfa Romeo Tonale, sure. Mercedes Benz S Class, uh, the two Kias, the Sorento and uh, the Sportage. Sure. You know, it's it's a, it's a long list mm. of cars, mm. of cars, mm. and like I'm saying, we want to give each of the cars a fair chance. A fair chance, yes, yes, yes. Without under similar con yes, yes, under similar conditions. So. If we want to find Tami Masemola, where do we find you? Online, and are there any other car things you do online that we can be a part of? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, yeah. Tami Masemola. Uh, on Facebook, it's Tami Masemola. On Instagram, it's uh, Tamsin. And, the, and then you don't have a car page or... InfoRide is our car page. Okay. Uh, I-N, you know, the number four, ride. R-I-D, yeah. Okay. And that's been around since, what, 2007? So what happens on InfoRide? We basically put up stories of all types, motorsport, uh, new new reveals, drives, launches, that sort of thing. Talking tech in cars, please make some noise for car editor, Tami Masemola. This is... Wow! What, what a week. What a week. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. This is Wow What a Week, part of the Africa Podcast Network. Reach us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. In English, her name might imply that she's quite little. However, there's nothing small about her personality and her ambition. In fact, uh, her name implies a beautiful day. We'll find out about her day right now. Let's give a wow welcome to Ms. Minnie Lamini. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Minnie. Hey, Fresh, how are you? Welcome to Wow What a Week. 
Thanks for having me. How's your week so far? Because you've, you've had quite a week. Yeah, I've had a very, very hectic week. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Been a lot of activity. Mm. Um, after a time where I, I'd like to say I've had a bit of downtime. Yes. Um, in terms of media. So, yeah, it's it's been a wow of a week. In fact, literally, you just came from an audition. Yeah, I did. Do you think you got it? What are you auditioning for? Um, I'm auditioning for a character. I don't think I can talk much about it, yes. but um, it's... Is, is it action? Are you going to be beating people up? Is it a rom-com? Is I it a series? It's a rom-com. Um, it's about a girl who's single in her 30s. Okay. And she's just told her family that she's having... She's got a boyfriend, which she doesn't. Okay. And she's got like 24 days to go find this guy to bring to Christmas dinner or, or something. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Like some people do in December that I must take someone home because yeah. I told them I'm in a relationship in Jovic. Absolutely. Yeah, my audition didn't go well. Though. <laughs> Where did you mess it up? I don't know. I just think I'm really tired, fresh. I think I've had quite a bit of a week. And um, I don't think I was able to fully just be present in that audition. Okay. Um, so so what, what happens in this audition? Maybe we can reenact it and we can... Maybe when they watch this, they can see that <laughs> you're fully committed to the Yeah, I'm really committed now. <laughs> um, I, I just told them to watch the movie and I was yeah. like, yeah, maybe that's going to be better than my audition. No, it just I just felt like I just wasn't as prepared as I usually am when mm. I go into spaces like that. Um, so I walked in, had to go in there and say how old I was um, and say my name and what role I was auditioning for. And then um, they gave me like five chunks of script. Jeez. And I was like, I only know like three of the chunks. So can I just do that? And yeah. it was like, fast forward to the end. And they were like, sure. Yeah. So that's what I you, did. Listen, you said you want to act. So you, be, you better learn the lines. No, exactly. Yeah. So um, so I did it. Um, I like the character. I think she's really cool. I think mm. I could pull it off. But again, it's it's what they're looking for. Do you think God has a wicked sense of humor that at this stage in your life, now you must audition for a single person, for instance? Oh, I absolutely love it because, yeah. I mean, in the film that's coming out today, yeah. I play a married woman with Lou. two kids. Yes. Yeah, I play Lou, been married, I think, over 10 years yeah. with two, like, you know, preteens, um, which is, you know, completely far-fetched from my life. For sure. Um, and then now I'm playing for so, playing someone single, which I am. For sure. And looking for love, which I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty cool. And, and now, playing Lou, Lou is in a marriage that, I don't want to give away too much. Sure. But that is almost now in autopilot. Yeah. Where... We do what we need to do. Mm. Did playing Lou at any stage have you thinking what if about your own life? Funny enough, when I started playing Lou and yep. she was going through her character journey, my marriage was over. Yes. Um, so, you know, all of the feelings that she was feeling, I'd gone through and sort of processed, you know, a couple of months before that, maybe mm -hmm. a couple of years before that. You sure. know, some of those feelings where I realized, is this the life that I want to be living? Is, mm. is this my life? Is this how I want my life to be, you know, and I think that's where she was at. So a lot of the emotions that Lou was going through um, in the film, yeah. I could relate to. Sure. Yeah. Did any of them make you feel some kind of way? Or were you like past them, you're done? No, some of them did make me feel some kind of way. I kind of feel like Lou was a bit of therapy for me. Sure. Um, because she goes through a really cool journey of finding herself in this film. Um, and that's kind of where I am now, you know, finding in, myself. In fact, I was going to say, I mean, um, you're quoted as saying you're finding yourself again. Yeah. What goes into finding yourself again? I mean, fresh, I was 26 when I got married. Mm. So, I mean, I um, I can speak to any 26-year-old. You don't really know yourself. I mean, you're in your 20s, you're yeah. partying, you live yeah. your best life. Yeah. And I think for me, I misconstrued having success early in my life and having acquired certain types of assets to thinking that, Okay, cool. The next step now is marriage. Um, is so there was a list and boxes being ticked. Yeah, uh, instead of actually realizing that I might not have reached the maturity level in my psyche mm -hmm. that I might needed to have gone through, if that makes sense. So mm -hmm. now I'm a 32 year old turning 33, and I'm actually starting to rediscover who Minnie is alone. Mm -hmm. You know, and and that's that's quite. It, it's a very interesting journey because I sometimes still feel like I'm 26. Does it get lonely? This uh, journey you're currently on? Not really. I mean, I have my kid, you know, 99% of the time, so it's never really lonely. Um, but what it is is that it, it's very it's very difficult realizing that um, 
I was in spaces and in places that I probably shouldn't have been in. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What is raising Neta, your son, teaching you about yourself that perhaps you didn't know? Um, that parenting is really, really difficult. Yeah, and it's cuck sometimes. Yeah, and it, it really, really is. Like, I mean, <laughs> love my kid. I'm kidding. <laughs> I really do, but it, it's difficult. Um, and it's even more difficult doing it alone. Um, and I think for me, just right now, it's a shout out to single parents yeah. um, everywhere. It, it's not an easy job. It's the most difficult job in this, on this planet. You doubt yourself. Sure. Um, I, I don't think I've ever been more insecure. I've never question myself more than I do right now um but I also feel like I mean God gave him to me for a reason mm -hmm. sometimes I just got to trust my gut and sure. and raise him the way that I was raised in a way because I think my parents did pretty good sure why Neta the name mm -hmm. Ooh. um rain is very significant in my family every time we have a big cultural event no matter how hot it is there'll always be rain even if it's a you know so he, so he shows up yeah, he really does show up, and, yeah. and the ancestors show up and, and say, good see, I know, or whatever the case is. So when Neto was born for me, I just felt the presence of, of my family being around in that room, and um, I just thought Neto was beautiful. And it's a word that I'd never heard as a name. Yes. I use it all the time. Yes, yes, absolutely. Now, when in industry where people almost take ownership of us, where people feel like they own you, yep. they own your career, they own any milestone that is yours. Yep. So with the changes in your life came a ton of trolls. Yep. How do you manage that? Oh, man, it, it gets easier yep. <laughs> the worse it becomes, to be honest. Because <laughs> then at some point, some of the stuff, like, some of the stuff starts getting really weird. Do you know what I mean? It's like... Weird how? Like, weird, like, I mean, I'll give you a dumb example. I mean, I think a couple of weeks ago, I think I trended for being ugly. And I'm mm. like... Yeah, like, nigga, please. I mean, I got eyes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, some of the stuff, like, can, can be hurtful and, and you, like, during periods that I'm going through mm. moments where I am maybe really insecure and mm. doubting myself and doubting my journey and doubting my position in this business. Mm. So sometimes certain things trigger those types of emotions. But, I mean, as they happen, mm. I start to realize I'm like, just keep talking, keep talking. When did it stop hurting or does it never stop hurting? The reading stuff that people feel about you i think it stops hurting the less you read oh yes um i think i'm i'm a sucker for pain so mm -hmm. i'll sit there and go mm, okay and some of them are quite funny yeah. um but yeah it, it, it's hurtful because it's me and i think what hurts the most is seeing how it hurts my parents there's that also that's that's what hurts me the most but i think the rest of it like sometimes i just laugh at the jokes and mm -hmm. just get over it because also again the more i trend the more relevant i am the more brands come and give me money <laughs> Now you lost your older brother, younger, uh, young, younger brother. Sorry, to an, yeah. was it to an aneurysm? Yes. How did he help you center yourself? That you sometimes say, if he was here, I wouldn't be feeling this. Oh, absolutely, and I think that's that's a big, big, big loss for me. Was was losing my brother. He was my biggest champion. I mean, you remember him. He was always with me. Sure. Um, we were raised like twins. We, um, in, in, in fact, we're booked for the same event in KZN once, and he came and introduced himself to me. Yeah. I was like, okay, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> but it also felt like a warning, like, stay away from Ella's sister. No. My older sister. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I mean, the way he walked up on me, I was like, listen, dude. He was, he was a country. She's my little sister, okay? <laughs> he was very protective. I mean, yeah. there were times where I'd be like, you're the younger one, yes. you know? He was very protective, but he was my biggest champion. I mean, we did everything together. I mean, we competed together every every sport that I played he yes. played and vice versa um so he was always there sort of cheering me on in a way mm -hmm. that um you know your parents can't because they don't also understand our life and our lifestyle yes um and I think he was really really good at, at filtering the noise mm -hmm. and just reminding me who I am mm -hmm. where I come from and and to just you know keep being me and 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 reminding myself who who I was and he was I, I miss that I, I miss almost having my my um my blood life coach. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, earlier on, you mentioned insecurities that come with the industry you're in. Yeah. You know, you have a child and then you obviously want to get your body back. Mm. And then you're cast for a movie that wants you in a bikini. Yeah. T tell us about sort of that moment in your life. What was so funny is I literally called the producer and I said, oh, I'm pregnant. Um, I thought because um, I don't know why, but I just thought that I was going to blow up yeah. in my pregnancy. Sure. I mean, you know, you see your Kim Kardashians and I'm like, okay, cool. My shape is kind of like, you know, mm -hmm. that 
probably balloon. My mom also gained a lot of weight when she had us. So I thought naturally I was going to gain a lot of weight. So I was like, oh, if you need to recast me, recast me. I didn't gain any weight in my pregnancy. Um, <laughs> um, I know, right? And um, so all of the stuff that I feared in terms of my physical appearance didn't really happen. Mm. Um, I felt more beautiful, sure. felt sexier, more powerful. And and I think afterwards I was just a little bit more determined to not just get my body back, but to, to get my strength back. Because mm. I think that's one thing that people don't realize is that some people are trying to get their body back and all that kind of stuff. And I might never, I might not have gained weight, mm. but I was so much weaker. Like sure. couldn't pick things up. Mm. And like, I just felt like so much of me had gone and I, I really wanted to gain my strength back. And in that got probably, you know, the fittest I'd ever been mm. in kind of the curviest I'd been as well. And um, I enjoyed it. I, I love my new body, mm. to be honest with you. So my mom bod. <laughs> so you guys are shooting uh, The Honeymoon. Yeah. And there's bikini shots, you get yep. having fun. T -t -t Tell us about making a movie. Let me tell you something. Making The Honeymoon specifically yeah. was one of the most fun experiences because I had just come off producing two of my own films under my own production company. And that was a whirlwind of a journey. But, you know, I didn't have to be on screen, you know. So I'm literally just there managing all the different moving parts that I needed to. But um, being on set and, and just being the star and having mm. like three different ADs like faff over you. That was pretty fun. Sure. Um, but what I enjoyed about it was um, the sisterhood and the behind the scenes. Like mm. what people don't see is that you're stuck with these people for like over two to three months. Sure. And they become your family and they become your, you know, you, they don't necessarily know what's going on in your personal life, but mm. they end up being a really cool support structure mm. um, without them even knowing. So that was really cool. Um, the bikini scenes were fun because I was really prepared. So I was like, Let's go. Bring it on. Bring it on. Let's do it. And I think that's another thing is that when you get into a role, you mentally prepare, mm. you professionally prepare. You know, I went back into acting class. Sure. Um, I had a coach and she trained me for a couple of weeks before the film because I hadn't acted in a really long time. Mm. So a lot of prep went into this. We had two weeks of rehearsals with the cast and the crew and um, we just had a lot of fun. When we got to Zanzibar, um, we couldn't shoot after 5 p.m. Yeah. And we obviously couldn't shoot before a certain time because mm. we, we needed daylight. Sure. So we partied like the only parts of the third of the French Revolution. Listen, <laughs> every scene in Zanzibar looked like, I was like, geez. That's literally what Zanzibar looked like behind the scenes. Yeah. 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 A lot of fun. So the movie drops today, The Honeymoon. Drops today. In why, cinemas. why should we watch it? I think you should watch it because it's very different. I think um, it's the first of its kind in terms of a chick flick. Mm. Um, you know, it's not a boy meets girl um, movie. It's a movie about sisterhood. It's about different women at different stages of their life, um, going through different journeys, all centered around their friendship. Um, I think it's one of those movies where you can identify with either all of the characters or one of the characters. Um, but I think it's a good time, mm. you know, and I think with all the stuff that we're going through in South Africa, just go into the cinema, have a good laugh and and also have a, a slight reflection of what's real and, 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 and what people's journeys are outside of the fun, I think mm. is really cool. I think the story takes a really cool roller coaster of emotions, but more than anything, it's a it's, it's a good vibe. So, who are your co starings Um, I start with Kajal Bagwandine, yeah, um, who's our lead, and then Dumi Morake, who is the comedy of the sure. movie. I mean, I don't think I've actually seen her funnier than she is in this movie, and she's phenomenal. She was incredible. In fact, she was like my spirit animal. Wasn't she, Judd? I was like, I wish I partied like this. You wished. Fresh, you and I have bodied together a lot of times. Yeah. There's no wishing you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. Don't. I don't know her. Don't. I don't know what she <laughs> Let's talk pretty privilege. Often people accuse you and many others of, it's only because she's pretty that she got this role. She got this geek because of her looks. Wow. You guys are even called it girls at some stage. Yeah. Let's talk pretty uh, pr privilege. I mean, I'm I'm sure it's got a lot to do with it. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, if someone's easy to look at, they sure. you do it have helps. A, it, it does it, help. It, it helps that you don't look like me. They should have come from fresh, but I mean, it 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 does. I think there is a bit of a privilege to it, but I think at the end of the day, 
You can be the most beautiful person in the world physically, but if you can't deliver, mm. if you if you don't know what you're talking about, if your skill set is like below par, mm. it comes through, it shows, and and I do think your your journey in this industry um, is probably not going to be as long unless you go in and, and actually put in the work. So eventually, people will realize that that's all it was. Yeah, and I think that's that's on you. Mm. You know, I think I think if you if you do fall into that box or category of, of pretty privilege or itch sure. girl. I think it's your responsibility to take control of of your art and, and your skill set and, and to make it better so that when people do want to say that that's all you're good for, you say, oh, okay, you try and mm-hmm. let's see how well you do. So shut them up, basically. Yeah, you have to. I think we have to work um, a little bit harder. And if you don't, then um, you're pretty privileged. Mm. In, in fact, I was, uh, you know, as I was watching uh, The Honeymoon uh, the other day at, at your premiere, um, you know, I'm watching both you and uh, Tumi on screen, mm. and I'm thinking to myself, you know, I've watched both of them over the last 15, 20 years, you know, coming into the industry. But what I appreciate and I respect about the both uh, women is the fact that they're not afraid to jump in and do it. Yeah. Where do you get that from? Like, what, like where do you get that spirit from? That it's an opportunity uh, that many might think I can't pull off. Yeah. Many who believe open up the industry, uh, might say, but why her? Mm. Where do you get the spirit from that I'm going to do it? Um, I think my drive has always been there. I don't yeah. think I can actually pinpoint it to, to anything else. I've always been very ambitious. I think um, my parents have always expected excellence from, from all their kids. Mm. Um, and my mom has a thing, she's like, just don't embarrass me. You know? <laughs> um, so be great is, has, has always been, um, you know, the ethos in our household. But more than that, I think as an actor, I mean, I'm a trained actress since I was three years old. This mm. is something I've been doing for a very... You've been on stages. Yeah, I've been on stages for a very, very long time. I mean, I was, you know, not only top of my class in matric in my school, I was top in the country. Mm. In, in my matric year, sure. you know? So um, drama is something that I've always loved and, and always been passionate about. And when you are a person who studied the arts, mm. you have to strip yourself from yourself and just dive into the character. Mm. Um, and if you can't do that, don't waste your time trying to be an actress, you know, or an actor. It's if you can't shed yourself, if you're not willing to cut your hair, look ugly, have no makeup, mm. wear ugly clothes, or, you know, if you're still consumed by your pretty privilege, yes. it's it's never really going to work. And I think um, my training in, in the arts has, has always given me the confidence to to depend on my skill versus mm. what I look like. In, in fact, there's, there's a saying, if I'm not mistaken, that says, never allow who you are to get in the way of the character that you're about to play. Absolutely. How difficult is it to draw that line? It's very that, difficult. That this is the character. Why am I allowing my opinions to get in the way? It's very difficult because, I mean, you also sit there and you go, oh, well, I went through this and because I went through this, this is how I would have done it. Mm. But the character is... is it's not you. It's not me. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know if you picked it up, but if you watch the movie, Lou's very soft. Like, she's yeah. very different from yeah. me. Um, up until she gets to a point where you can... Zan- little- Zanzibar walk up to herself. A little bit, you know? And and I think... Um, and a guy with a six-pack. That's <laughs> Deval Mark. <laughs> Listen, ladies, go, go, go watch the movie just for his, like, eight-pack. Because <laughs> it's not even six, it's like eight. Yeah. Um, but I think that was, that was it. Is that I had someone say to me, um, it was so good seeing how soft you were, mm. you know, in the beginning of the film, because mm. um, it's not really, you know, your nature. And I was like, oh, thanks. I appreciate it. So, you know, you also try to adopt traits that are very different from you so that it's not misconstrued. Yeah, sure. Or you end up being typecast according to who you are. Exactly. As opposed to how far you can stretch yourself. That's actually why I haven't acted in, in about mm. eight years, was mm-hmm. the roles I was getting was just too close to brand mini da mini and I wanted to do something that was going to challenge me yes allow me to be someone else yeah because that's what acting is exactly we're going to play the wow game okay I'll give you an example wow why didn't you tell me this about parenting what's that moment um parenting yeah um that it's tough as nails man it's really really tough I think people are so consumed about um, showing how fun and how beautiful it is on social media instead of really um, talking about the realities. I mean, yeah, that was that was re- breastfeeding sucks. 
It does. <laughs> Excuse the pun. <laughs> How long did you breastfeed for? <laughs> Three months. Oh, then you're like, uh, you, listen, dog, you're on your own. No, he was like, nah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. great. It wasn't for <laughs> But some mothers feel a sense of rejection when the little one is done with the breast. Yeah, no, I didn't. So you didn't? No, no, I was, I was, I was fine. You like, you read my mind, dog. I was like, we yeah. can assume my homie for life. Wow, what a misconception. What have you heard about yourself? The worst misconception is that um, Kune Lobolag me. That was, that's the worst one. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. So... People still think it's true. So how many cows was it? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> it wasn't even a level or a conversation. It's so bad. I actually went on a date and so, someone was like, someone really thought it was real. Yeah. And I was like, no. But... The relationship wasn't that hectic. Wow, what a milestone. Why is nobody making noise about this? Uh, in your career. In my career? Yeah. Um, where did you feel like, come on, guys, come on, like, where's the applause? Why are you not standing up? I don't think for me it's about where's the applause because I think for me it's it's a matter of, I've always been that one person where everyone's like, wow, whatever. Yeah. And so I've gotten really used to it. Yeah. Um, but I think for me it's just my journey. You know, I'd been on air, I think, before my show ended for about eight years, mm. if not longer, um, on live television every week and without you're, fail. And you're this kid that's like jumped in there. You're like, yeah. yeah, and I don't even think it's eight. I think it's even longer, guys. I mm. think it was it was much longer. I think it was, oh, it was my 13th year in the industry. So, um, yeah, I think it was about between 10 and 12 years that I was on live television. And I don't think that's a feat a lot of people have, have done unless you've been on. So it's taken lightly. Yeah, unless you've been like news or sport. Sure. Um, so, yeah, and I just think I've done a lot of really, really great things um, and a lot of really great, um, milestones and, and accolades that I've that I've you know racked up over the years that I think people take for granted. Yeah. But um, I know what I've done. It's there. No one sure. should take it away from me. So I, I don't think there's anything specific that I can say that people didn't recognize that I care about. Wow! What a break jam. Which which song do you go Isha to? <laughs> There's so many. Yeah. Like I mean, Snoop drop it like it's hard is like my jam. Um. Like, that's my jam. So when you're goishing. Oh, goishing. I yes. thought you meant like just breaking it. No, home. no, no. Oh, goishing. Yes. Ooh. Even Snoop was like, huh? Sorry, that was that, not fun. <laughs> but maybe, actually. Yeah. Have a good time. I don't know. I'm a slow jam queen. Mm. So I listen to like heartbreak songs galore. Love Takes Time to Heal, Mariah Carey. Yeah. Good, like, breakup song. Um, Cause you mostly go wishing when it's when it's a homie. Like, is there any song that got you through the divorce? No, I think it was just like '90s R and B slow jams in general. So not got you. Yeah, not just an actual song. Mm. Maybe like all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so every time you played, you take out a light. Wow, what an adult moment. When did you realize that Minnie is all grown up now? Um, Probably last year. I think last year, the first time in my life, I looked at myself and I was actually alone, you know, and, and I had a little kid who looks at me and says, Mama, and I was like, okay. cool, I came. It's somebody's mom. That, that's when I realized, I was like, oh, wow. When my kid turned two, and I was like, yeah, I'm grown. Yeah. yeah. Wow, what a brother bear moment. Your late brother, Cosini. Yes. What line reminds you of him all the time? Oh, so many. But yeah. one of the things um, he used to always say to me is he used to be like, man, 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 you're so dope. You're so dope. That's how he used to hype me up. Yeah. So every time I'm like really, really sad, I'm like, I'm so dope. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what he used to say to me all the time. Wow. One day is one day. What box have you not ticked? Oh, I still want to produce mm. a blockbuster. Okay. Yeah. Whether I'm in it or not is neither here nor there. Mm. But I, I do want to produce my own um, big blockbuster film. Mm. Yeah. While making movies and series is a ton of work. 
Tell us about your production. <laughs> yeah, making movies is crazy. That's when I realized that, yeah. you know, I don't know, because I come from TV fresh, I think making TV, it's slightly easier. And I don't know if it's just because of my experience in it, I kind of know what to anticipate. Mm. But one thing about production is that anything that can go wrong will go wrong. Absolutely. Um, and so because of my experience in TV, I think I know how to mitigate all of those things. But, mm. um, you know, going into sort of longer form and scripted content, um, I almost needed to rely on, on, on the people that I hired that had more experience. Mm. Um, but it's a ton of work. Sure. Always make sure that you hire people that are smarter than you, that are better than you, that are more talented than you, that know better, that are more creative, because that's the only way that you can learn and grow, and it's the only way that your product can be amazing. It's also management 101. A manager hires people that are better than them. Absolutely. Because you want the best product. Yep. You're not trying to, I want to show you guys that I'm the leader. No. That doesn't work. My name is there it's enough yes i need to I've make shown up yeah, yeah. That, that's enough i need to make sure that everyone that's working with me sure. is at the best and the reason for that is so that i can step back because mm -hmm. i think the worst thing is when you find um producers who micromanage mm -hmm. um let the people that you hired do their job or hire people that you can let do that job exactly Exactly. I ask this to everyone that I interview because I think it's a it's it's, it's a pandemic that we are doing nothing about. Um, your mental health, are you protecting that? I'm trying. How? I'm trying therapy, mm. um, prayer, mm. spirituality. Um, you know, I, I find myself um, speaking to my parents a lot. Mm. And, you know, there's a certain age you get to where you realize that, oh, everything your parents said was right, yeah. you know. And, that rarely ever wrong. Yeah, and, and when you get to that age, and I think usually happens when you become a parent. Sure. Um, because then you start realizing that, oh no, they're also human, you know, and what you thought actually wasn't the case. Um, so I speak to my parents a lot, and I think because I'm so blessed that they're still around, I try to like absorb as much as I can, and I let them, you know, the lectures, I used to be like, okay, bye, 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 and I'm like, are you done? Are you done? <laughs> like, like, but I'm, I'm not done. Yeah. yeah. So um, I just spend a lot of time with people that I know have my best interests mm. and not people who are going to tell me I'm amazing all the time and people who are going to tell me the truth. And and, and and when you're going through a dark time, um, you need people who can tell you the truth that you know comes from a good place. Because sure. I think people also love to tell you the truth there when, when it's in their best interest to kind of like jab and hurt you. Or to put you in your place. Yeah. Or to remind you that you see now, you see now. Yeah. As opposed to, you need to hear this because it's in your interest. Exactly. Would you ever remarry? Yeah, mm -hmm. I would. So still a romantic? At heart, like I'm a hopeless romantic. But you're not looking. No, I'm okay, let's get divorced first. If, if AI said, Minnie, I'm here to make you your ideal man. Yeah. What would go into that man? Oh, that's a goodie. Um... Funny enough, someone who's like me, and I know that sounds really weird, but... So a beautiful man. <laughs> no, it's like me and his Okay. Yeah, like yeah. someone who's um, really funny and who likes the same things as me. Someone who's a don't, dream. Don't we all want that? <laughs> yeah, but also that's the thing is that like, you know, I think we, we get so consumed by societal expectations of mm. what an ideal partner looks like. Opposites attract. Opposites don't attract. Don't get it twisted. Please, like, get someone who, you know, you want to say, oh, you know what, let's just, you know, go grab a drink at a bar, and they mm. think it's a cool idea, instead of like, no. No, you have me we don't go to bars anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it's just someone who has a zest for life and um, is youthful at heart. And looks good in a bikini. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> sorry. <laughs> yeah, but I just, I just want someone compatible with me, I think, for the first time. Um, someone who's secure in themselves. Mm. Um, and not threatened by me and, and the type of person that I am and supports me, loves me, cares about me um, unconditionally and someone who um, would protect me more than anything. In fact, one of the things I've been preaching a lot about is the fact that one thing we need to learn as men is to understand that the woman in your life has her own dreams and she's not there as your other half. She's her own full person. 100%. And the minute you allow her fly, you, the minute you allow her to reach her full potential, you're going to have a partner that is happy, that can be in a better position to make you happy. Yep. 
because she's not feeling like, why are my wings being clipped? 100%. Why am I not, not allowed to fly as high as you are flying in your career? Mm. And I think the minute we as men start understanding that it's okay for her to fly mm. and to have her own dreams. Mm. And if you have kids with her, if she's at her happiest, your kids will be happier. Yeah. Because they're not being raised by someone who's bitter. Yep. That and I, angry. I haven't been allowed to do this. Yeah. Um, I keep being told, no, but what about the kids? Yeah. The kids will be fine. 100%. And I think you, what you're saying is, is exactly it. You know, I'm looking to be with someone who allows me to be the fullest version of sure. myself. Yeah. Guys, trust me on this. Vinny, I don't believe you have reached your full potential yet. Thank you. I, I still think you are still cooking. And uh, we're yet to see the best of you. So please keep dreaming, keep uh, breaking those boundaries, uh, keep proving them wrong, and keep proving yourself wrong where you might have had uh, self-doubt about yourself or your, your your ability to deliver on something. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think you've only just begun. Awesome. I think we are still in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Remember the name, Mini Glamini. I'm coming. Is about to leave the building. <laughs> I promise I won't come like us for some at the DJ ball. <laughs> anymore and we are done from battery powered vehicles to an electric personality a creator who gives you a buzz and a commentator who can give you a jolt hope you all stay charged for the next time wishing you all a wow week shout out to our entire team uh, the guys at amp studio thanks for giving us a home we love it here it's a beautiful place Africa Podcast Network. Love you guys. Pezulu Works, thank you for your incredible cinematography. Our audio engineer, magician, artist, The Flow Frazier. And of course, our guests. Shout out to Tami Ma Semola, Primo Baloi, aka Primo19. Please find him on TikTok and show him some love. Mini Jamini, brand new movie opening this weekend, The Honeymoon. Go and support South African and African film. Shout out to creative director Kuvesh Mohan and our show producer Kele Zomudisa King. Email us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Till next time, have a great week in spite of yourselves. This is... Wow! What a week. What a week.